Hello, it's James here from Portainer, and I want to show you around a Portainer Business Edition feature which lets you create and manage a micro Kate's cluster very, very easily. So let's launch into that. As an admin user, go into the Environments List screen and then into Add Environment. There's a Create a Kubernetes Cluster option, which I'll select. And this is for creating a cluster on existing infrastructure, in my case, some VMs in a data center. So if I go into that screen, you can see here it tells you MicroCase cluster will be set up on your existing VMs and the Portainer agent will be deployed to that cluster so Portainer server can communicate with it. I put my cluster name in here. I'll call it MicroCase on Hetzner. And I select my credentials. I've previously been in here and set up credentials, but if you're coming in here for the first time, you wouldn't see any and you'd be prompted to set some up. You can also go and maintain your credentials at any time in the shared credentials option. I'll flip over to this tab and you can see a bunch of credentials I've previously set up. Those that say SSH are the ones being used for the MicroCates functionality. The others are for our Kubernetes as a service feature where you can spin up clusters on different cloud platforms. So in the add credentials screen, you can set up the SSH credentials for the MicroCates function, is supply it with some sort of identifying name, anything you want. Enter a username and optionally a password, or you can use an SSH key, or you can use both a password and SSH key. You can generate an SSH key here. You can put in some kind of passphrase if you want. And you can download or copy the private key and the public key. You then set up your credentials and if we go back to the add environment screen, you select the ones that you want. These are the ones I've previously set up and they're going to let Portainer access my machines. Then I specify the IP addresses of the VMs, either comma separated or in new lines. And if I had any separate worker nodes, I could put those in as well. In fact, I'm just going to have my control planes acting as workers. I can then test the connections. That says they're reachable. I can select the Kubernetes version. At the time of the Portainer release in this video, we default to MicroCates 1.27. 1.2 it did come out just before this Portainer version. We did include the ability to select it, but we didn't have time to do a lot of testing on it. We also allow install of add-ons. We install certain ones by default, and you can select further add-ons that you want enabled. You've got core add-ons and community ones. So for instance, I might want my storage mechanism as open EBS. Plus, depending on what add-on I select, I get a context-sensitive tooltip related to the add-on selected, including a link through to the help page for that add-on. I can specify arguments if I choose to. Now, whether an add-on has arguments does depend on the add-on. We have a placeholder with the typical argument for the particular add-on, but use the help link in the tooltip for details for that add-on. There's a more settings expand section below where you can select a custom template that you would have already set up. This is basically just a manifest. That means you can have certain resources automatically created when your cluster is spun up. For instance, I've got a custom template here that just creates a namespace and a secret. Actually, I'm going to change the MicroCates version back to 1.27 because I want to show the upgrade feature later on. Now I just kick this off. And if I go back to the environment screen, you'll see that it's creating the MicroCates cluster. There's a little tooltip here which I can hover over for a bit more info. And as it goes through, it will give me different status updates. Okay, I've returned here now a few minutes later and the MicroCates cluster is up and running. We go to the home page in Portainer. You can see the environment there. So we can go into the environment. We can now deploy applications but let's go into the cluster details screen. You can see the info on the cluster here. There's actually a new panel, MicroCates cluster management. You can perform upgrades to newer MicroCates version. 
you can add further add-ons. Let's go for metric seller. And if we apply the changes, it gives me an info panel here that tells me it's doing some changes to the add-ons. Okay, so that's finished now. So I can also run a status on any of the control plane nodes. You can see it's running high availability. Because it's a three node cluster, it'll automatically have high availability enabled. It shows you the master of the control plane node IP addresses, what add-ons are enabled. There's the metric server one. Open EBS that I enabled when I first created the cluster. Then I can go back I can see whether it's a control plane node or a worker node here. I can also run an SSH console. It opens up a window here. I can run whatever commands. Now I'm going to perform an upgrade. It's got the info panel again. This will drain each node in turn, which will stop pods on the node, disable the add-ons on that node, upgrade the version, and then enable the add-ons and uncordon the node again to allow scheduling of pods again. I've come back after a short while and the upgrade is completed. Now I have a micro K1.28 cluster. Now I'm going to show horizontal scaling of the cluster, which basically means adding nodes or removing nodes. So you go into add nodes and you can add further control plane nodes or worker nodes. Let's add a worker node. The info panel is telling me it's setting up that new node. So I'm back again now and We've got the fourth node added there, worker node. And just to show you, we can also remove nodes. And we're back here now, and the node's been removed. The final thing I'll show is deleting an environment. I can now remove an environment and here I can actually permanently delete a microcates cluster and uninstall microcates and now leave my VMs back as they were without microcates installed. Okay, well that ends this demonstration. Hope that's useful. Thank you.